done a lot of hiring for a decade uh, from IITs, from IIMs, from ISB, and even for lateral hiring, even at senior roles. In this video, I'm going to touch upon this topic of giving interviews and what you can do to actually turn this in your favor. My name is uh, Sandeep Das. I'm an MBA from IIM Bangalore and I have a strategy course from INSEAD. And I'll give you the perspective of a recruiter, what we look at when we actually interview someone for a role. So let's get started. The first method you should look at is to bring your hobbies to the forefront. Now, when you walk into an interview, the first question is typically tell me something about yourself. And you will generally talk for about a minute. You will talk about your work experience, your education, your internships and projects. And the last line of that one minute introduction of yours, you will say that in my free time, I like reading, I like traveling and I like watching series. This is the most common answer. Now, how can you use that one line of hobbies and bring an element of storytelling in it, bring an element of spice and fire in it so that the first five minutes of the interview goes in your favor? Instead of saying, I like playing cricket, what if you were to add a story to it saying, I am a leg spinner and over the last six months, I've been learning how to bowl the googly. Instead of saying, I like watching web series, what if you say, I like watching Korean series and Squid Games uh, is something I really enjoyed. Instead of saying, I like uh, watching movies, what if you say, I'm a big Batman fan and I've seen all the movies that have been made on Batman. Now, what this does is when the end of your introduction, there is an element of story, there's a bit of color. The interviewer, someone like me on the other side, first of all, is extremely curious that you've brought so much detail in it. The first two or three questions I will ask is essentially about what you said. So one, you come across as a very interesting personality. Second, the first five minutes of the interview is being discussed on a topic where you are very, very strong at. The second way you can look at is uh, to be absolutely on top of your current affairs. Now, sometimes when we see a very good candidate, could someone in their early 20s, late 20s, or even in their early 30s, when we see a very good candidate, sometimes I've often thought that let's push this person slightly outside their comfort zone and see how they react. Now, when you want to push someone outside their comfort zone and to see how they react in a slightly stressful situation, you don't need to ask them a very difficult question. I will not ask them uh, what is the trade deficit of India with the US or what is Heisenberg's uncertainty principle. The tact that we employ is we ask something so obvious or so common that if the person does not know that, they put themselves under tremendous pressure. Now, interview is the last place where you will hear basic questions being asked. So in the past, these are some of the questions I have asked and I've seen many, many smart, experienced professionals uh, struggle on these questions. Who's the vice president of India? Who's the president of India? Who is the president of India? Uh, Manmohan Singh. Who is the president of India? Who is the president of India? Who's the captain of the Indian cricket team? What is the size of the Indian economy? How much is the rupee to the dollar? How many states are there in India? How many medals did we win at the Olympics? When is the next Olympics? Some very basic general knowledge stuff which you are expected to know. Now, when you're walking into an interview and when you have a conversation, especially in a business interview, you are expected to have opinions on certain political affairs or certain current affairs. So for instance, uh, on obviously on COVID, what is happening right now on the vaccination status in terms of uh, what's happening in sports with the controversy with BCCI, farmers protests, India's war with China, a lot of contemporary issues you're supposed to have opinions on. Now, sometimes when we get a really, really good candidate who is well prepared, people, someone like you who's probably seen this video and then come to interview with me, there's another way in which we push uh, some candidates out of their comfort zone and to see how they react or how they respond to very, very difficult questions. One of my favorite questions I've always given uh, over my 10 year interviewing career is to give a candidate a white sheet of paper and say, this is a modern art painting. This white sheet of paper is a modern art painting. Put a price to it. How much will you sell this painting for? 
So how will you approach this question? Why don't you write your approach in the comment section and we'll have a conversation there. The next principle you should strongly consider is avoiding any conversation on religion and politics. Why do I say that? Because only religion and politics can bring out the irrational side of a person. There is no other topic that can make people so volatile and so emotional. When you are walking into a room, into a high stake interview, you rarely have a view in terms of how the interviewer or the panelist thinks on religious or political lines. He might be conservative, he might be progressive, he might be liberal, he might be supporting party A, he might be party supporting party B. You never really know. And the last thing you want is to bring the irrational, volatile side of a person out. Now, sometimes a conversation is inevitable. So, for instance, a panelist asks you, what do you think is going to happen in the UP elections or the Punjab elections? Now, in a question like this, you have to take a stand and give a viewpoint. And in my view, what works best is not to talk about what the media is churning out in terms of opinion polls and perceptions of CM candidates, but to talk from your personal experience. So an answer could be that I will talk from my experience. My family stays in Lucknow. Uh, this is what I've heard has gone very well. This is what I've heard has not gone very well. When you give these personalized kind of answers, it actually reduces the potential angst that you might have when you take a stand on an entire state based on media reports. Now, sometimes the panelist can ask you very tricky or confusing questions, which you're not sure of and never hesitate to take a few seconds off. So if you have a question which is very delicate or difficult or intricate, just ask the panelists, can I take a few seconds to gather my thoughts? They will actually appreciate it that you're trying to collate your thoughts and present yourself in a very cogent manner rather than rambling the first thing that comes uh, out of your mind. Now, this is an ongoing series. These set of videos are an ongoing series about how you can crack your interviews. This is a starting flavor I've given about each of these themes. I'll do detailed videos about how you can build upon this uh, interview series. If you have any thoughts, if you have any comments, if you have any questions, do drop them in the comments box. If you like this video, do subscribe to this channel so that you can know when the other videos are being released. If you want to connect with me, you can connect with me on LinkedIn. You can send in your questions here or you can send in your questions on LinkedIn. Till next time, take care.